Hi and welcome back to um, another demo. Today I'm going to be painting this uh, beautiful semi-abstract landscape using one colour, Payne's Grey, and two brushes. Most of the work is done with a large Pro Art Harke brush and um, I'm using a small calligraphy brush but any fine brush will do. I'm also using the corner of a plastic store card to etch some marks and sprinkling in a little bit of salt for textural effects. This is another one of my quick and easy experimental watercolours. Um, it takes um, just over five minutes to paint plus drying time um, and if you want to see more quick and easy paintings then look for the quick and easy playlist um, on my channel. I'm using a sheet of Milford watercolour paper. It's cold pressed, it's taped to my board um, with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees because I want the paint to flow. I'm going to be painting this wet in wet. Um, you can use any large flat brush. It doesn't have to be a harky brush for this. And this is a great exercise to loosen up beginners. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna wet the paper mostly all over. I will leave a few dry patches um, in the lower half so that I can have some soft and hard edges when I start to put in some paint. Now I'm dipping into my Payne's Grey. It's fresh out of the tube, keeping it nice and rich to start with. Remember, I've wet my page. There's plenty of water on my page. I don't need any extra water in my brush. The brush is just damp and then dipped into the paint. Now I'm just building up sort of things that will give me a potential uh, distant tree line. You can see the paint running down where the page is wet and I'm encouraging it hopefully into planes of land or suggested planes of land. Remember this is abstract, it's from my imagination, anything goes. Um, I'm just enjoying myself and having fun and letting the water and paint and the angle of the board, so gravity, interact to give me some beautiful effects. I would encourage beginners to have a go at something like this, maybe in your sketchbooks on a small piece of paper on the back of an old painting and just play around and see what what effects you can get and have lots of fun just really exploring what watercolour will do when you just give up trying to control it and just allow it to do its own thing. I've just washed a, a dilute mix of Payne's Grey across the top for the sky. I'm turning my painting round, um, tip it and tilt it in any direction that you want and watch the paint run and flow and you can begin to make decisions as to where you want your rich paint to run um, and that sort of dictates how you turn your board. Now, one of the interesting things about um, this method of painting is that even though it's very random, it's very spontaneous and unpredictable, it's something that can teach you what water, paint and gravity together can do. And those lessons you can then take into your more planned paintings so that your paintings become looser and more expressive. You can see that I've um, put in some stronger tree canopies and now this is the corner of my plastic store card which I'm using to scrape down across the page in a shallow diagonal and that's sort of giving me some some sort of perspective lines just suggested if you see what I mean. It's also moving the paint around a bit more. Nice strong dark paint for my tree canopies and I shall put some trunks in shortly. And I should do that to start with, with the corner of the card. So I'm scraping through the wet paint, dragging some of it into the canopies and bringing the trunks down just to um, the paint line there, if you see what I mean. So now these just random blobs are beginning to look a little bit more like trees. 
And as soon as we start to suggest the tree shapes, all the other random marks, the brain begins to interpret them as fields, maybe hedges, um, a hill, that sort of thing. So it's quite interesting to play around with this sort of experiment uh, because I think it helps to get your eye tuned for being able to um, paint more loosely so that you are suggesting things rather than overtly painting detail. So this sort of exercise is really good practice if you want to loosen up. So I've laid my board flat because I don't want the paint to run down anymore. So I'm just going to do a few final touches before I leave it to dry completely. Firstly, I'm going to just lightly add a few more bits of fairly dry paint. At this stage, you don't want to use a wet brush in the damp sky because then you'll end up with runbacks. So just dry paint there, then a little bit across the front in the foreground. And now I'm going to use a little bit of um, ordinary fine table salt. I'm going to sprinkle it across the foreground and I'm hoping that if I'm lucky, um, the paper will be at the right stage, not too wet and not too dry. And hopefully I'll end up with some little salt blooms and patterns. And now I'm going to have a cup of coffee and I'm going to leave everything to dry. I'm not going to touch it and then I'll come back when it's completely dry and finish the painting. So it's dried nicely. I've got my board back up at 45 degrees and sadly the salt didn't give me much of an effect. I've got a bit of texture in the foreground, but not the little flower blooms that I was looking for. But I'm really pleased at the way my distant trees have turned out so far. So I'm going to strengthen those up a bit and I'm going to use my second brush for this, my small calligraphy brush, or you could use a liner brush, um, a rigger, or a detail brush, a small round, anything with a point, um, so you can do very fine lines and just add in some more trunks and a few more branches here and there. You can bring some of the branches up through the canopies that you created earlier. And just strengthen the illusion or the suggestion of these being distant trees on the top of a hill. Even if you are a beginner, I would say do have a go at this. It's something that's so much fun and it's the sort of exercise that can kind of take the pressure off and make you feel more relaxed about, about watercolour painting. And that means that you'll progress much more quickly if you feel more relaxed. So you can see that my distant tree line now is shaping up quite nicely. I'm pleased with the way it's looking. My diffusions of paint from the wet in wet process at the beginning has given me some beautiful marks which kind of suggest a sort of misty distance as well. And I'm really pleased with that. So now that I've added in some really dark tree trunks, I'm going to balance it back up again with some shadows underneath the trees, um, just helping to sort of connect and uh, bring the painting together. Just a few little dots and dashes here and there just to break up that tree line a little bit. Maybe some smaller sort of suggestions of shrubs and foliage and stuff like that. A bit of dark across the bottom um, to frame off the painting, um, to give it a little bit of um, tonal value and depth in the foreground. And then I'm going to um, just add a bit of texture with the brush. And then I'm going to use um, the corner of a card um, to scratch through the indication of shrubs, brambles, grasses. And I want the grasses and brambles to point up, sort of tending up in a diagonal up towards that distant tree line and the light behind it, because that's my focal point. So if I bend my grasses in the same direction as the focal point, then the viewer's eye should kind of follow and move through the painting um, from those textured um, grasses in the foreground. So that's only taken just over five minutes to paint, um, 
plus a bit extra for drying time. But I think you can see how this, even for beginners, is a great way to loosen up, take the pressure off yourself and relax into the whole process and just um, see what happens. So now I've taken off the tape and you can see the painting with a clean white border. I'm hoping that you can see that it's a reasonably convincing sort of abstract or semi-abstract landscape. Um, there's some interesting marks. Um, there's some nice textures. There's good tonal values, lights and darks and all that sort of stuff. But more importantly, I've had a lot of fun and I've been exploring and experimenting with the way watercolour behaves wet in wet, how the watercolour gives you hard edges where it resists um, going into the dry paper areas um, and how you can maintain areas of unpainted paper to create really strong light against your very dark contrasted marks. This is why I like working with Payne's Grey. It kind of splits out a bit to greys and blues as well as giving you this almost black. So it's a wonderful colour to use for these experiments. So I hope that was helpful. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear whether you've tried anything like this and if so, what you learned from it. So please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And um, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.